I recently just launched version three of Content Automation OS. This was one of the OG AI automation templates that we got started with about a year ago, and it has come a long way. And just one of the workflows inside of that system helped you write AI blog posts in a very different way compared to if you were just to use a few different prompts inside of the ChatGPT dashboard. Now I did have questions about what do the quality of those posts actually look like. I'm going to provide an example in this video. I'm going to add the example of the blog post unedited to the sales page as well. You'll find it in the FAQ section. So the, the sales page will be linked down below somewhere so you can read it. And then you can determine whether those blog posts are better than what you're getting existing by using the dashboard or these other tools and decide for yourself. Now there are other tools out there like Brandwell, for example, used to be content at scale. I have used those. You're looking at paying $25 per article with these guys. They do have extra features, which means the use case for you could actually be worth it. But for us, we're generating articles for less than 50 cents with the blog post article writer I'm about to show you. Some of them are even less than 10 cents per article, and they're pretty close in terms of quality. The only things that are not integrated, which some of the tools have, and Surfer is another one that is a little bit cheaper, and Koala is a cheaper version again, which I have used, which I think our uh, article writer is very close to what Koala provides. But they're charging you quite a lot of money per month for these articles. Like I said, we're generating these articles for anywhere from 10 cents to 50 cents. You do need to add your internal and external links most of the time, and they probably do a little bit more research. But if you're just generating articles and you have keywords to go off, then what I'm about to show you will be super valuable to learn anyway. So let's dive into the dashboard now. So here we are, we're gonna write a post about how to switch to solar panel under the Tesla brand. So as always, whenever you're using any type of AI, whether that's you prompting it yourself or a type of AI automation, we have to ensure we're adding our brand assets or all some details about our brand in order to make sure that we're getting the right outputs. So here we're, we're doing things like writing grade level, brand voice guidelines, excluded words. However, it doesn't always follow excluded words. It's getting better, but it still doesn't follow it entirely. The customer avatar, a little bit about the brand. We want to give it some of those types of things to ensure that when the output comes out, it actually sounds like the brand. So now we just go into our content automation OS dashboards and we want to go down here into our new blog post flow. And here we're going to create a new blog post. So we'll just click on this plus button here and then we'll add in our details for this post. So it's going to be under the Tesla brand. It's going to be hard to switch to solar. We're not going to worry about any internal or external links here, but these would be any internal systems that you have when linking to other posts and so forth. However, I will say that not many people in our community are using this. Most people are using different WordPress plugins that have full control over interlinking them automatically. And then any blog post external links. So if you're doing any research before you are creating a blog post, then you probably have different links to link to sources and things like that. You can add that here. Sometimes it will add it into the blog post, but it is very hit and miss. We are working on other systems and we have a great masterclass coming up in our Massive Moves membership in December where we're going to talk about this more. But right now you add these internal links in here. If the AI doesn't add them in during the post writing itself, then you can just add it into the source section afterwards. We can add our URL slugs. So here it could be something like, like this so that if you need to upload it to the website, maybe you're doing it via an automation or someone on your team then you could just provide that URL slug there for them to follow. Now we want to provide any context uh, or of what we would want the blog post to follow. So here we would say provide statistics, but ensure you reference any sources. Do not ever make these up. It must be real. We could also say provide examples of products they could use and ensure they are our own products and why those products are better than what else is on the market. And any other type of context that you think would be important, then you just add those things in here as well. So now we just go create. So here we have this information in here and we have the right brand selected. And step number one in the blog post workflow is to choose the type of post that you wanna write. Now, all of these are linked to our prompt library and you can go in there and edit them however you wish. So you have full control over your prompts. That is the whole idea of building systems inside of Airtable is that we want to have a prompt library where you have full control over making edits, over adding new prompts, over changing what gets fed into your automation. 
we don't want to be adding too many prompts inside the automation, if any at all, because having to change the automations all the time, like going into make.com, for example, can be a massive pain. It's load slowly. You've got to make changes in there and then come back to your dashboard. So we want to have full control in the systems itself. That is one of the most important tips when it comes to AI automations. So in this one, we're just going to write a how-to guide and we're going to use Claude 3.5. Now, for some reason, ChatGPT, some of the models struggle with following the this automation. I'm going to get to the automation in just a second. Claude seems to be the most consistent at the moment. And honestly, for me, I actually prefer the writing that Claude does compared to ChatGPT or any other model at this point as well. So here, we're just going to go create blog posts. And now it's being fed off into this automation here. So this automation looks scary. It's not, there's just multiple variations of workflows. So if you do buy the template, we give you the option to use uh, the open AI route. We give you the option to use the Claude route, but our preference is using openrouter.ai, which is a platform that brings all of the LLMs together. So you can choose any model that you want just by creating one route. Now there's also an option of using a premium plugin, which we do prefer as well. Or you can add a few extra modules and use JSON plus the HTTP modules to then connect in with Open Router as well. So I'm not going to go too much into that besides just saying that at a high level. If you want to learn more, then let me know and we can talk about that another time. But basically what's happened is we've fed in all of that information from our Airtable dashboard into this workflow here. So we've sent it in via webhook. It then calls the Airtable API in order to get all of that information. It then uh, sets our status to AI writing. So that's where we saw this status here as AI writing. It then creates some variables using tools. So this just allows us to share templates a whole lot easier. Plus when you start building a lot of automations, setting up all your variables at, at the start makes like building the rest of the workflow so much easier. So we definitely encourage people to do that as best practice. We also then have this route here, which is filtered to say open router. So this is how the AI knows which route to go. If you have all of these models connected, for example, you can, you can connect them all if you wish, um, but then you just filter them. And then the first real prompt here is the outline. So we're saying to it here is, here's the title, here's the primary keywords, uh, here's the internal links, external links, more context about the article, the blog post type that we want to write, and then the transcript. So your task is to provide an outline in this particular language. So we can also choose any language that you like, and it will write an outline that we can then use in further steps in order to create really long and detailed blog posts. Because the issue with just prompting the Claude dashboard or just the, the chat GPT dashboard is that it will begin writing a decent post, but what we'll find is that it's very short. So if you're wanting longer blog posts, it just won't do it unless you prompt it over and over again and copy and paste and stitch it all together. Whereas here, we're actually feeding it in an outline. And then we have an iterator here that works through each of those individual sections. And it will write just one section at a time with the context of what came before and what came after. Now, I'll give Nick Sarev a shout out here. He actually got this type of workflow started many months ago, probably at the start of the year. He provided a workflow similar to this. We did get one thing wrong where we had a formula in this filter section, which I'm going to get to, which actually wasn't working kind of random that it works sometimes and sometimes it didn't. But basically what we're saying is we want the AI to work through this one section at a time. Let me get an example up so I can speak through it more specifically. So this was the one that we just triggered just before. So here, if we look at the output from the outline, it has created the outline here of how to switch to solar power. So it's got the introduction and then three key points for the introduction. It's got the understanding solar power basics and then four key points here. And then it continues on providing an, a full outline first and foremost, so that we can work through these sections one at a time. So then we feed it into the iterator and the iterator is split by the input brief. So the input brief that we uh, have sent in is this variable here, which is basically the output from the AI and from the outline. So we're feeding this in one at a time through an array. So you can see all of that there, it's feeding through each line, but then we're saying filter here. So every, but in this filter here, we're saying if the section starts with two uh, hashtags or, or an ATX format, it's like a H2 heading. So we're saying if that section starts with this, then we want to set this variable, which is replace the input brief with the value 
of that parameter or that iterator and an arrow here to say that if there is an arrow in this section, then only write this section down to the next uh, hashtag section. So let's look at the example of what happened here. So it's fed in the input of the content brief. So that's all of our contacts up the top here. That's our prompts and a good example. And then it's saying here, write an award-winning article. Your task is to write one section, one section only, the one marked by the arrow. Your output should be in English language. So then it's right, it's got this section here, and then it's got our two hashtags and in the introduction with the arrow in this section. Now, ideally, what it does is it just writes this one section and one section alone, but it has context of all of what else is to come. So the idea is that it's not going to repeat itself too much if it does write one section at a time. So that's the first one. Let's have a look at the second one, see if that input came out correct. So that's all the context. So we feed the context in every single time. Then we've got our transcript here. And then we can see now it's moved from one down to two, and it's now writing this section here only. And it should follow that every single time. But what happens is if we did say nine or 10 sections with the same prompt, then it can begin to look the same. And what I mean by that is when we're reading a blog post or any type of content really, except for maybe books, is it's just easier for the eye to read if there's bullet points and H3s and different types of sections within that. So this idea, as I said, came from Nick, where we're going to send this up every so often to change that text a little bit. So in this module here, we're saying, edit the following text to break up the flow, add bullet points, subheadings where needed for a variety, use markdown text. So in this tool here, it's an increment function tool. So we're saying um, every time this iterator runs through, count this workflow or count this operation so that it's an increment function. Basically, it means when it goes through the first time, it goes to one. When it goes through the second time, it goes to two. When it goes through the third time, it goes to three. And then we have a filter here that says on every fourth run, so we've got it set to on run four, on run eight, on run 12, send that run up to here so that we can split up the text. So basically what we're saying is 25% of the time, we're going to change the structure of the, of the text to make it sound a little bit better and make it easier for the eye to read. Then we set the variable again to pull it all together. So we set our variable as section text, then we get all the section text, pull them all together, and then aggregate them all together before we feed them back into the automation. So what does that look like? So if we look at the blog post now, we've got our main heading, which is pretty solid. It's given an image suggestion even, we didn't even ask for that. It's got our introduction. So it's got understanding solar power basics. It's got a few smaller headlines in here. It's got some bullet points in here. It's got now our next section, some uh, H3 headlines. Uh, it's got now our next section here. It's even used page four. So like it's going down even further. Uh, it's got choosing our solar panels. So potentially what I'm looking at here is we might need to change this a little bit to be even less bullet points. Claude have definitely changed over the recent months where it's, it automatically writes a lot more bullet points now in these types of posts. So we would probably want to change it a little bit to say um, maybe even remove that workflow that changes, that sends it off into the bullet points. But you can see here that this blog post is much more detailed. It follows the outline. It also has a whole lot more content than your just your typical blog post uh, prompt inside of chat gpt so like i said i'm not going to touch this at all i'm not going to edit it i'm going to copy this into a pdf i'll add this to the sales page so that you can check it uh, but from my point of view this is much better than what we can get just with a few prompts and also this is not an optimized workflow like if you're great at seo you probably have your own specialties your own secret source you can add in your own prompts. You can change the prompts that I have to get better outputs. Like I said, you might want to remove, if we're using Claude, we might want to remove this workflow here so that it doesn't create even more bullet points than what it's automatically creating already. So it's completely up to you how you do optimize this as well. But I thought I'd give you that example so that you do have the context of how of the quality of these posts so that you can make a great decision as well if you want to use this content automation system or not. Now, if you do have further questions on this, then comment down below, but also inside the Massive Moves community. So this is our annual membership that you get access into education and content and deals and discounts and Q and A sessions with myself. We are bringing on experts from the outside who have way more experience than I do when it comes to SEO 
to show their secret sauce as well when it comes to building these AI automations. So you might want to check that out. There's going to be some really great content in there over the next year. And we'll be able to dive deeper into building even better workflows for this. So for example, one coming up very soon that you might be interested in is I'm bringing on an expert who scrapes the top three results from Google first, reads through all of those, pulls out any relevant information to then feed into the context of the AI blog post article writer. So doing something like that just again elevates the quality of the post to be exactly what the search engines are looking for. So we're going to be diving into that very soon. If you are interested in that, make sure you join the Massive Moves community and I'll see you in the next video.